Hey guys, Susan Thomas here, and today I'm going to be unboxing a mystery parcel of gemstones and making a tin cup style necklace. So Natalie from the JTV YouTube channel, hey Natalie, sent over this parcel of gemstones. It's 500 carats. I have no idea what's in here, but I'm really excited. I know it's available to purchase if there's any left. I'm really excited. So I get to unbox and check it out for the first time today. Ooh, wow. So 500 carats, that's what that looks like. And then we've got all these different gemstones in here. And really cool, these are all cabochons, so this already kind of gives me some ideas what you could do with these. This one I recognize for sure, it's my favorite, labradorite. And you can tell because you see that labradorescence in there, that kind of blue sheen, that blue green sheen right across the top. That is gorgeous. A little piece of jasper, red jasper. Uh, looks like we've got some snowflake obsidian is my guess on that one. Rock crystal quartz. Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. Look at that tiger's eye. That is beautiful. This one's cool. It's amethyst and it's kind of an unusual shape. And these are neat because they're all cabochons, meaning they've got that flat back on them and that domed front. So I can do a lot of different things with these. I could use glue on bales. I could wire wrap them. Uh, I actually sometimes glue them on the top of flat wire and make adjustable rings with them, which is really fun. You know what else you can also do with these if, if you've watched any of my soldering videos, you can bezel set these and make pendants or earrings or rings or anything. I think cabochons are cool because you can, you can go really low low skill, like just glue them onto a piece of wire or a bale, or you can go all the way up to fine jewelry and actually set it in 14 karat gold and do a bezel setting. So they're amazing and this is an awesome parcel. Now I'm completely inspired and I have to make something and I have already gotten started on a tin cup style necklace and I would like to take one of these and glue two glue on bales to it. And I'm thinking that I'll do a glue on bale on the top and a smaller one on the bottom so I can do a tin cup necklace, kind of like this, and then put the stone at the bottom. So say I use that one right there and then dangle a tassel from it. You're gonna need a few tools. You'll need some silk. And this is just a size six silk cord. Love these silk cords because the needle is already attached and it's two yards. So plenty long enough to make a necklace about this length or even longer. And you're also going to need some glue on bales. And so let me just kind of show you these different ones I have here. This is from a glue on bale kit that we carry. And you can see there's different shapes and sizes. And what's really great about that is all your cabochons are different shapes and sizes, so you essentially put the one on that matches the shape and size of your cabochon. All right, so you're gonna need a few more tools and supplies. You're going to need a tin cup knotter. This is from Beetalon. It is a, a patent pending tool and you can't get it any place else except for from Beetalon. And I believe we may even have the exclusive on these right now, but it is a phenomenal tool. I'm in love with this thing. You're gonna love what, you, what it can do. Uh, it comes with a little Allen wrench so you can adjust this piece right here and make longer or shorter spaces between your beads. You'll also need a crimper. I'm gonna use my Amtara crimper and you will need a flush cutter to cut. It didn't really have to be a flush cutter. Any cutter or really sharp pair of scissors will work. For the glue on bales, I have got uh, two part epoxy. You can pick this up anywhere. Sometimes we have it in stock, sometimes we don't. Uh, but essentially it just needs to be two parts. One's gonna be the resin, one's gonna be the hardener. And I'll show you how to do that. It's not hard. I mean, it, it is hard, because it gets hard. But it's a really strong glue that works for these pieces. So to get started making a tin cup necklace, I've actually already done the first half of the necklace and I'm just gonna mirror it on the second half. But you attach your clasp using a crimp bead and I'm gonna do that on the other side. So you'll see it, so don't worry. It's just uh, one of the ways that you can end silk cord. I attached my clasp. Then you just string all the beads that you want on your necklace. And in the case of this particular necklace, I have 15 beads, 15 large pearls on one side and then two small pearls and then 15 large pearls on the other side. So I just strung and started knotting all the way down to the point where I wanted to put on my cabochon. So let me show you how you glue the bales onto the cabochon with the two part epoxy because that's where I am in my project. And then I'm gonna do the same thing all the way up the other side. So it's basically a mirror image of itself. So what I did on the first half, I'm gonna show you after we get this on there. So my favorite one is this one because it's labradorite and it's my favorite stone. So we could glue a bale onto that like 
See, because it's that rectangle shape, this will be perfect glued on right there. So I'm just gonna put those two right there and then I'm going to start with my epoxy. And this is gonna be my resin. Let me get this up here. And just anything disposable is what you can do this on. I usually use a piece of cardboard. Uh, sometimes I use paper, but it can kind of leak through the paper. So the cardboard is a little bit better. So there's your resin and then you wanna have equal parts hardener and resin. So I'm gonna put about an equal amount on there. And I don't know if this is true or not, but I always say err on the side of a little more hardener if you're not exactly sure if you've got it completely even. Uh, but, you know, just put a pea size amount of each one and then you mix them together. And I'm just using a little piece of scrap wire that I have laying on my bench. And you just mix it up like so. And then on the glue on bail, you're just gonna put some of that glue in there, like so. And then take the flat side of the cabochon and put it down onto that bale. And then I'm just gonna set it right here on my piece of cardboard. And that will take about, maybe this is, a, this is not a five minute epoxy. There are five minute epoxies. This one takes about an hour to, to set, but once it's set, it's like hard plastic. So it'll stay forever. So we're just gonna put that one to the side so I can show you a little bit later. So it's super easy, really easy. All you have to do is glue a bale on the back and then I can hang that piece off of any necklace. It's, it's really makes cabochons very accessible to the beginning jewelry maker. Like if you're just getting started, start with cabochons because they look so professional and it's really easy to do that. Now on this one, I kind of went a whole nother level and I put a glue on bale here at the top because this is a neat one. This is from another one of the parcels. It's kind of a shield shape. And so I put the bale on the top and then I put a bale on the bottom. And this is this little small one that I was showing you before that's great for earrings. But if you look at it from the front, it's not super obvious. So that's where my tassel's gonna hang when I'm done. So when I was stringing, I got to here and then I strung my cabochon and then I continued stringing all my other beads. And so none of these beads on this side are knotted yet. So I've got the mirror image of the first side. So right now what I'm ready to do is tie a knot. Let's see, nope, I've already tied. Let's see if I tied that knot. Yeah, I've tied that knot. So now I'm ready just to pull this down to my work. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie another little knot right here just so there's a little bit of space for my pendant to hang. And so what you do to tie a knot, and I'm gonna take my ring off here so it's not in my way, is you take your three fingers, and I always use my fingers like a tripod. And I grab the cord in my other two fingers and I wrap around like so and make a little, almost like a little spot for it to go in a little loop. And then you just drop all the beads that you've already knotted through including those last guys. And then you take your knotter and you're going to poke that all down into the loop and then you're gonna pull it up to where you wanna knot it. So I'm just gonna put that knot right there and I wanna give myself just a tiny bit of space, like so. So now I'm bringing down my pendant and it's gonna hang right there between those two knots. And I'm going to bring down my next set of beads to the knot. So let me kind of show you a little bit more about the knotter. This of course is just your handle. This piece right here is actually what determines the length between your beads. So I wanted about a quarter inch between each bead, so I measured out a quarter inch. If I wanted to make it longer, what I do is I take this little Allen wrench and you unscrew this and then you can make it longer or shorter, as long or short as you want. And then this little piece right here is an awl. And that is what you tie the knot around. And that kind of, and because it comes to a tiny little point at the end, it makes that knot really, really tight and goes right up against your beads. And then this little piece is kind of a surprise. It kind of pushes up like so. So I'm gonna do that again. And it pushes the knot off. 
So that's pretty easy, but it's a little complicated. So let me do it a couple times and then you'll see. So one time I'm gonna knot right next to the beads and the next time I'm gonna knot and leave the space. So first thing at first is you're going to make that little loop around your fingers. Start with your tripod, wrap the cord around your fingers, make the hole or the loop and drop all your beads down through there. So if you've just started, you'll have one bead, but if you're where I am right now, you're gonna have lots of beads. And then always very important, don't come up from the bottom, come down from the top and form an X. And then you wanna put your finger right there, not on the tip because it would hurt, but right there. And then you wanna pull the cord until the knot is right up against the beads and then put it right there in that little pusher and push it up and off, like so. And now you've got a perfect knot that's gonna hold those beads in place. Now you're wondering how in the world do you get that space, Susan? So what you do is it's almost exactly the same, but just a little bit different. So I'm gonna wrap around my fingers, make my little loop, drop all the beads through, like so. And this time I'm gonna go down into the, into the loop. Oops, make sure you put your finger there so it holds on. And you're gonna pull it up tight, but you're not gonna go all the way and you're gonna take this piece and you're gonna put it in that tin cup part. And you wanna come up nice and tight to it and then put the cord in there and then push the knot off and tight. And so now I have that space between my beads. So now I'm gonna pull the next pearl down. And so see how that worked? and then you just continue like that. So once again, around, make your little tripod, drop all your beads through the loop, take the awl, make an X, and now this one goes down tight all the way to the beads. Oops. And push it up and off, and so that one brings your knot really, really close to your pearl. So then you're gonna come to your next bead and this next bead is gonna need a space. So I'm just gonna keep going and I'm gonna go around and it kind of becomes almost like a mantra. So you go around, through, make an X. And this time we're gonna do that tin cup. So you're gonna bring it down, you're gonna pull it up, but not all the way and pop that in right there and then into the yoke and push it up and off and then next pearl down so see how it's going here glue on myself there so make your circle and so this just kind of keeps going it's it's very repetitive but it's really really easy and it makes a beautiful necklace. And you know what's cool about the tin cup style is that you don't have to um, use as many pearls or beads. So you get a lot of bang for your buck out of your beads. So I'm down to my last couple beads here, and so I'm just gonna show you how to finish off or to do these knots. So first of all, you gotta get the knot that holds the pearl in place. So I'm just going to go around my tripod, around all three fingers, drop all those beads that we've been working with through, including that cabochon that we glued on. Everything goes through the circle, and then make an X, put your finger on the awl, and pull that knot all the way tight to the awl and put this into this yoke and then push the yoke up and off so the knot's right next to the pearl. And then I gotta make another circle, or another loop around my three fingers. I'm running out of cord here so I don't, can't make as big of a loop as I want but I'm gonna drop all those beads through. Everybody go all the way like so. And then same thing, make an X, hold with your finger and pull this tight, but not all the way tight because you want to make sure you get that space. So you're going to drop 
that knot behind the big yoke, pull it tight, and then push up and off like so. And so now I made that space. And I'm gonna pull my last bead, very last bead down, and I'm just gonna make one last knot right there. So all the way around the tripod, drop all the beads through, make an X. Pull it tight to the awl, drop that in the yoke, and push up and off. Ta-da! So now all I have to do is attach the other half of my clasp on the other side. But you can see, well I have to attach my, I have to attach my tassel too. So, but let me show you. See how cool that is? Ooh, it was cool until I dropped it. All right, so I'm going to take, now I just already have this tassel that I made and it has a little jump ring on it and I'm going to attach that to the bottom of this piece just to kind of finish it off. You can use a pre-made tassel, you can make your own tassel, you can do whatever you want to. You could even drop another cabochon off the bottom. Lots of different things to do to finish these off. All right, so I'm gonna grab a chain nose plier and a flat nose plier, and I'm gonna open this jump ring and attach it to the bottom, and then I'll show you how to put the clasp on. So you're just gonna take this and twist open, and so there's that little bail that we had at the bottom. Just pop that through, and twist closed. So that's gonna be the bottom of our necklace. Cute. And now I still have, on the other end, I need to put a ring to attach my clasp to. So, technically you should be using a closed jump ring for this. I am using an opened one, which is very brave of me. <laughs> um, but you wanna, go, you wanna grab a, a closed jump ring to finish this off. You can also use a length of chain so that you have extender, but we don't really need that on this necklace because it's already long. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a crimp bead and you're going to put that on to the cord, like so, right up next to that last knot, and then go through the jump ring and back through the crimp bead. That's what's so cool about this cord that this needle is already attached because I never had to thread a needle at all. It's the best cord for knotting. There's really, there's really nothing else I would use. All right, so then you're just gonna pull that up to the knot. There's my crimp bead, and I'm gonna use my Omtara crimper which is great because you only have to squeeze one time to crimp it. So I'm just gonna get right into that first little groove right there. And give it a squeeze, just like so. And that's perfect. Okay, so we've got that crimped and now we're just gonna take, you can use a flush cutter or a scissor or whatever you want to, to kind of just clip off the extra cord. And look, I mean, I was cutting that close. I barely had any cord left. And so this is now ready to wear. There, I could change it out. Just like that. And I just wanted to show you guys real quick that this Labradorite bead, or cabochon, I shouldn't call it a bead because it's a cabochon, no holes. And uh, it is actually setting up really well. It's not, it's not completely set. It's been about 30 minutes since I put it on there. But once, but you can see it's a little hard to pull off. And so I can actually hold this just like this and I could make a cute little necklace. Okay, so to do this project, you're just going to need a cabochon of your choice a tassel, and then some pearls and assorted beads. It doesn't have to be pearls, whatever you like. And of course, your silk cord. Love this silk cord with, from Beadalon, uh, which has the needle already attached. Really great stuff. As far as tools are concerned, you're going to need that tin cup knotter, and you're going to need a, a scissor or a flush cutter. I use my flush cutter just because it's handy. You will need a crimper. The Omtar crimper is fantastic. Just one squeeze and you're done. And finally, I used my chain nose and my flat nose pliers to open and close my jump ring. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys would like to pick up some supplies like the ones we worked with today, including this mystery box, check out the links down below. What are some things you've done with cabochons? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. And we'll see you again next time.